Welcome to the third annual 1954 Project Luminary Awards. Introducing our host, journalist, and author of the 1619 Project, Nicole Hannah-Jones. Hello everyone, and thank you for joining us. I'm excited to be here with my friends, Liz and Don Thompson, the founders of the Cleveland Avenue Foundation for Education Group. Their organization addresses the barriers that students of color face within the education ecosystem, along with the racial disparities in the funding of the organizations that set out to remove those barriers. And today, for the third year in a row, they are announcing their 1954 Project Luminary Award winners, who will each receive a $1 million investment to support the incredible work they do to advance achievement in our communities and beyond. We'll hear about all the time, talent, and treasure these leaders have invested in their work and the impact they are having in communities across our nation. First, we want to recognize that every spring, May 17th marks the anniversary of Brown v. Board of Education, the Supreme Court ruling that sought to end segregation in America's schools. That landmark decision, now nearly seven decades old, also led to a lot of black schoolhouses shutting their doors. These were warm oases of learning where black educators took special care to nurture and affirm the next generation. Let's take a look back to 1954. Schools in our communities had sports teams, after school clubs, and teachers who might stop by your house and tell your parents if you were doing well or acting up. We had neighborhood schools with black administrators dressed sharply from head to toe. Schools that despite unequal resources, uplifted and affirmed black students and supported their families. Schools that cared if their kids learned and made a little feel like a lot. It was an era of historically black colleges and universities known as HBCUs. Schools that graduated black doctors, professionals, and teachers. And while Brown v. Board brought with it some welcome changes, it also led to massive firing of black educators. Nearly 40,000 lost their jobs, and that loss is still being felt today. While black people make up 14% of the American population, they represent only 7% of the teacher workforce. Yet, research shows that black students who have a black teacher are less likely to drop out of school. They perform better in school and are more likely to be recommended for gifted programs. The sharp divide between the vision of ending school segregation and the stark reality of the drain on black educator intellectual capital needed to be bridged. That led Liz and Don Thompson, two black philanthropists from Chicago, to bring together their networks of friends in corporate, private, civic, sports, and entertainment leadership to invest in black leaders in education. So now, let's meet the team behind this powerful work. Please welcome my friends, Don and Liz Thompson. It's so good to see you guys. It's been a while, and I'm really excited to be back in Chicago with you. We're so glad you're back. We've missed you, girl, but we know you've been busy. And we are so proud, because we keep watching the 1619 Project and all of your efforts, and it just makes us swell up inside. Thanks, y'all. It's been a real journey, and I'm proud of how far the 1619 Project has come. But now, I'm going to put on my reporter hat and talk to you both about your work. I don't know if most people know that you all met at Purdue, where you both graduated in electrical engineering. And I might add, you've both been successful, very successful in your own rights. Yeah, let me tell you, that electrical engineering degree kicked our butts as we, was, <laughs> as we were getting it. But what we remember most are our parents, our grandparents, the guidance counselors, our mentors and community folks who supported us when we were struggling students. They did whatever they could to make sure we were doing okay. And they encouraged us at every turn. They stuck with us and they saw us through to graduation day. That's exactly it, Nicole. That support from our families and other supportive adults made all the difference. It allowed us to realize our potential, and it also set us on the road to success. With our fundamental belief and faith that God would guide us forward and the belief that others had in us, we actually believed that we could achieve great things. And one day, that we would be able to reach back 
and provide that same support to many others who are traveling the same road. We were determined to look all around and see who was doing the kind of work that we wanted to see that could lift students up and support them so that they could serve even more people in our communities who came up the same way that we did. So that seed of providing for others, what you once needed yourselves, seems to have been planted very early. That's right, it absolutely was. Because we know there's an abundance of genius in our communities and yet too much of it goes unrealized every day. All it takes is for you to just spend a short amount of time with students and you know very quickly that there are young George Washington Carvers, there are young Maya Angelous, and young Nicole Hannah-Jones in all of our neighborhoods and schools. And yet there are still so many systemic barriers in place that prevent our educators and hence our students from fully realizing this potential. Now there are many initiatives working to remove these barriers across the education landscape and to help shine a light on the deep reservoir of talent in our communities. But after leading two nonprofit organizations myself, and with Don's time as CEO of McDonald's, we decided to leverage our collective experiences and the networks we've built to support the leaders of these organizations. And in particular, the black leaders who are closest to the solutions we need to see. And Nicole, you know us, we are absolutely and unapologetically in support of black leaders and others who are helping the next group of young black and brown individuals from neighborhoods around the country who might otherwise miss out on the opportunity to showcase their own unique talents. That's how we came up with the idea of the 1954 project in the first place. Why did you name it the 1954 project and what are you both trying to accomplish? That's a great question, Nicole. We wanted to call attention to the fact that so much of the black intellectual brain trust had been removed because of that Supreme Court decision. A fact that you and I may know Nicole, but very few other people know it. And so we want to recognize and honor the black leaders in education who are working to lift up our students, especially those in some of our most underinvested communities, and award each of them with $1 million in unrestricted funding. You know, we realized and understood very early on the power of investment. And we also understood that we wanted any dollars that we might invest to have a multiplicative effect and to yield high impact returns. This is also why our partners and other supporters along this journey with us are so valued. It takes all of us to maximize the returns of the 1954 project. And we know that those returns will include an increased ability for the voices and perspectives of some of these young black and brown people around the world to truly be heard and valued and for them to grow their leadership as agents of change in their communities and beyond. And this important work that you and Liz are doing is being recognized by philanthropists and stakeholders in philanthropy all across the country. We are thrilled that the foundations and other philanthropists around the nation are reaching out to learn about our approach to being in relationship with the folks that we fund. And the more we can share our approach and our learnings, the better the entire field of philanthropy will be. That's why we've decided to partner with several other organizations to advance our work. And one in particular, our friends at the Bridgespan Group, we're gonna talk a lot about later. They have written a case study about the 1954 project, and we'll be excited to share some of their learnings throughout our program today. That report was a great reminder for me and will help educate others as to the unique barriers these leaders have to overcome to receive transformational funding from traditional philanthropy. And I love that you are addressing these challenges for luminaries that we are about to meet. That's what this work is all about. You know, Nicole, we have lived these challenges ourselves every day. And we'll continue to leverage our networks and our resources to help others and all that we can do to help them. So let's get to it and let's meet our luminaries. So let's kick things off by giving some shine to a few of our very first luminaries. We asked Sharif El Mekki, our first diversity in education luminary from the Center for Black Educator Development to introduce our 2023 luminary in the category of diversity in education.
As a member of the 2021 cohort, I've had an amazing ride as a luminary. The million dollar investment from the 1954 project allowed the Center for Black Educator Development to expand from Pennsylvania to New Jersey and from Michigan to Tennessee. We've recently trained 140 black teacher apprentices in our Freedom School Literacy Academy and successfully advocated for policy changes within the Pennsylvania Department of Education. I am so excited to welcome my friend Carmina Simon to the 1954 Project family. Like me, she's a luminary in the diversity and education category. I admire her work and the way that she brings once missing voices to the conversation, ensuring they are heard. I'm Carmita Saman, the founder and CEO of the Surge Institute. As a senior executive within school districts and education nonprofits, uh, I saw and witnessed the great disparity between those in senior and executive level roles and the students and families that we served. And I saw the disconnect in the strategies, the systems and outcomes for those students because of that. At the Surge Institute, we accelerate the impact of education leaders of color who have too often been overlooked and underrepresented in senior and executive level roles. At Surge, we don't groom or develop leaders. We amplify and elevate the genius that already exists within leaders of color. The Surge Institute launched our signature program, the Surge Fellowship in Chicago in 2015. Since then, we've expanded our programming through the Surge Academy in six additional cities. And we are proud to say that our fellows receive a signature program that is rooted in head, heart, and spirit. Our fellows receive the tools, preparation, and networks that they need to thrive in leadership roles and to create transformative change for students, families, and the broader communities they serve. We are the proud home of the Black Principals Network, which provides a space for community, professional growth, and collective liberation for Black principals from across the country. Since 2015, we have graduated over 300 alums from the Surge Institute and Surge Academy. Those 300 alums have positively impacted access, outcomes, and opportunities for over 3 million students nationwide. I am so thrilled to become a part of the 1954 Network. This transformative million dollar award will bolster our efforts to amplify and elevate the genius within leaders of color who are creating transformative change for young people, family, and communities. I'm emotional because I'm thinking about um, just what this means as entrepreneurs, and those who support us, we put everything into making these dreams come to life. And as someone who emptied every bank account that I had, it was down to my last $48.33 to now being on the receiving end of a million dollar award, um, particularly from black philanthropists is, um, there are no words to really describe what's happening. So that's why I'm emotional right now. The work of transforming and dismantling systems that have underserved or not served our people for far too long is not individual work. It is not an individual superhero story that launched Surge. It is a Justice League story. I stand on the shoulders of those whose names and faces I may never know. I work alongside an amazing group of staff members, board members, volunteers, uh, funders, and just a tremendous network of lifetime supporters that have created the experience that is Surge, head, heart, and soul. Class of 2021, 
I started the Calculus Project in 2009 to give 7th through 12th grade students of color needed math skills to teach or embark on lucrative careers in STEM. Since I was selected as a luminary, my organization has been able to expand into a consortium of six school districts that use our model to improve minority participation and success in advanced mathematics. We've also increased our staff by 50% my advice for the other 2023 luminaries is to savor the moment and think about the best way to utilize the funding, resources, and network to increase your impact on society. Currently, 80% of the children in the Juvenile Justice Center in Alameda County come from Oakland. And 80% of those children are African American, almost exclusively male. We as an organization are pushing children out of our schools and into the justice system. We have to interrupt that. And this board saw fit in June to approve a plan and a direction that framed a position that would be an executive director level role inside of our organization to take primary responsibility for coordinating efforts to interrupt the institutional oppression and racism that is effect, in effect in the city of Oakland. So it is my extraordinary pleasure tonight to introduce to you somebody who will start on Friday as the Executive Director for African American Male Achievement, Mr. Chris Chapman. Greetings. My name is Chris Chapman. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Kingmakers of Oakland. Kingmakers of Oakland was born out of Oakland Unified School District's Office of African American Male Achievement back in 2010. We were blessed in 2018 to submit our paperwork to become a nonprofit organization. And in 2021, we received our authorization letter to become a fully autonomous nonprofit organization that centers black boys while serving all students. The core of what we do in Kingmakers of Oakland is improve education on life outcomes of black boys from pre-K through PhD. We heal the fish while treat the toxic ecosystem. Kingmakers of Oakland is excited to expand our work beyond the Oakland, San Francisco Bay Area to the Pacific Northwest and greater Seattle, in the South, Midwest of the United States, as well as the East Coast. We also have expansion globally with regions in Africa, Central America, and South America as well. I personally would like to thank the 1954 Project for this extraordinary opportunity to expand and grow our community. We fundamentally believe in the concept of I am because we are, we are because I am, may the circle be unbroken. To be a 2023 luminary, uh, to be nested with extraordinary uh, people committed to improving the life outcomes of Black children and Black people, uh, we can't do this individually. I want to thank and welcome the opportunity to continue to build with brothers like Sharif El Meki to support our work around recruiting, training, retaining Black male teachers. And it is through this collaboration and partnership with other luminaries being able to benefit not only from the financial resources, but moving brothers and sisters from not working to networking will allow us to improve uh, the conditions, the systems and structures where all of us uh, can take our crowns out of our pocket and rock it. In closing, let me re remind us in the spirit of the legacy that we carry forward. We are planting seeds that will grow to be trees that will provide shade for children we haven't even envisioned yet. Thank you for allowing me to be a 2023 luminary. I'm Brittany. I'm born and raised in Baltimore and I'm never leaving because where else would I grow? I'm also the founder and CEO of B360. In Baltimore and all around the country, people ride dirt bikes in traffic 
because unlike skateboarding, unlike bicycling, there are no safe spaces to go to. And my hometown is also a misdemeanor for just riding a dirt bike, which is crazy. What I saw instead was more STEM people and more jobs and more opportunities and how to make sure for Black people, we also thinking about disrupting the prison pipeline. So far, it's been 9,000 students and counting that we served. We've hired and trained more than 50 dirt bike rides and growing. And we're working on the first ever dirt bike campus in the country. This was special to me because I lost my little brother to the prison system. And then I'm also a retired chemical engineer where for five to 10 years, I never got to recognize in my position. So at B360, we're carving out new lanes every day by making sure you for young adults know how smart they are. So I got inspired to make B360 because of my disdain for being a black woman in STEM and following the Freddie Gray uprising. So growing up in Baltimore, I knew I was going to be like Bill Nye the Science Guy. I like to make stuff blow up. But no one ever thought about the Black girl in first grade that was angry because she was bored. Can also be the Black woman that grew into a chemical engineer. I did. In my first job, however, I was confused for the secretary and it made me mad. But more importantly, it lit a fire in me to come back to Baltimore and do programming. What a lot of people said was Baltimore has 120,000 STEM careers that could move families and communities out of poverty, but they never talked about how people are already smart by doing everyday skills. So my hatred for being in STEM also led me to making B360 immersion in these worlds. But when you think about Meek Mill popping a dirt bike, for example, when he puts his bike at 12 o'clock, that's a physics equation. When riders have to mix their gas and their oil, that's a ratio for math. Um, and when you fix and repair your bike, that's what people do every day to pay their bills, like mechanics or mechanical engineers. Um, so our goal at B360 is not just to make more Black STEM professionals, but to remind people that I exist and smart Black people in cities exist too. Um, my experience with 1954 has been crazy in all the best ways. Um, my interview, they snuck me, they surprised me. So I thought that I was in my final interview and they made me really comfortable. We went through the last questions and I'm nervous. I'm like, huh, they said it's 500 more people. They're interviewing, they're not gonna pick me. When we get towards the end of it, they're like, they have a surprise. I'm like, what now? Cause that made me nervous. But the good thing was, the surprise was I was already chosen. And on behalf of the 1954 oh, Project oh, and our <laughs> Leadership Council, we want to congratulate you oh, on wow. being selected to be a member of our third class of luminaries. Y'all are very sneaky. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say thank you to the 1954 Project. One, for believing in Black women like me. Often in this space, we're discounted, even though we can make it really far. Um, but that meant a lot, right? It was heartfelt, it was familial. Um, and there are a million Brittany Youngs all throughout the country, but we never hear about million dollar investments for our own organizations and our own people. So I just wanna say thank you, but also I'm more than excited to be a part of this network and I appreciate it. As a member of the inaugural Luminary Class of 2021, I was given a powerful platform to elevate Braven's work with underrepresented young people, arming them with the tools to transition strong from college or universities into strong, highly paid first jobs or go to graduate school. This platform helped me expand Braven's work and mission to Spelman College, our first HBCU, Every single Spelman woman in her sophomore year now is able to take the Braven experience. It also helped us strengthen our infrastructure. So we have now 6,000 students nationwide going through the Braven experience, and we're on our way into a second partnership with an HBCU, Delaware State University. I want to salute the class of 2023. I hope you feel immensely proud of this achievement and also get super excited about all of the resources and the network that you're gonna get as a result. I'm super excited to pass the torch to the economic mobility luminaries in this class. Hi, my name is Ruben Agbana. I'm the co-founder and executive director of the Marcy Lab School. We offer a tuition-free, 
a year-long program in computer science and software engineering. That course is wrapped around with a ton of leadership development and civic studies learning as well. Then we partner with incredible companies here in New York and across the country, like the New York Times, JP Morgan, Asana, Weight Watchers, and the list goes on, to ensure that our students have access to high paying full-time jobs in the tech sector upon graduation. Most importantly, jobs that otherwise would require a traditional four-year college degree. We founded the program in September of 2019 with just nine brave fellows in our first pilot class. Those students we consider to be our co-founders. They created the conditions and allowed for the learning to build a program around their needs that we're now scaling to the more than 100 students that are in our building today. The Marcy Lab School is proud to say that our average graduate earns over $100,000 per year working at incredible companies that provide them with a pathway forward in their career after their first few years in that role. We hope to scale this program to thousands of students across New York City in the many years to come, and we know that we won't be able to do that alone. I think about two, two and a half years ago when Marcy was like in its first year, I was a teacher. I, my, my main job was like to teach nine students how to code. And now we have a 25 person team and people who've been around for a couple of years and are asking about their first promotions and we need you know career ladders and like how do we keep this culture of like familiarity and like closeness and community but also like dial up accountability and clarity um, such that people have an idea of like how their individual jobs contribute to the main big goal we're incredibly grateful for the support of the 1954 project we thank you for allowing us this platform to tell our story for recognizing and honoring our work, for lifting up Black leaders, for the incredible, radical financial investment in this organization, and most importantly, for giving us access to this group of leaders that I've admired from afar for a very long time. The thing that keeps me up at night is like me, the need that I have to grow in my leadership development at the same rate or faster than Marcy, the organization, are growing. And I know that leadership is hard. It's wonderful to know that I'm not gonna be doing it alone. So thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for this recognition. Hi, I'm Alex Bernadotte, founder and CEO of Beyond 12. We're a national tech-enabled nonprofit we close the economic divide by increasing the number of students from under-resourced communities, students of color, and first-generation college students who make it to college graduation and who translate their degrees into meaningful employment and choice-filled lives. As a first-generation college graduate myself, I know firsthand that getting that college acceptance letter or enrolling in college is only the first step. First-generation students need and deserve greater support support that can help them maintain the momentum that has gotten them into college in the first place. So this is where Beyond 12 comes in. We're a digital coaching platform that combines coaches who work with students virtually, a campus customized mobile app, and an AI powered analytics engine that allows us to predict which students need help and when and prescribe the right type of support. A $1 million unrestricted grant from the 1954 project is game changing. It's going to allow us to significantly scale our impact so that we can serve more students and to enhance our analytics platform so that we can provide more data and robust insights to higher ed administrators. Attending the 1954 summit last year was a powerful experience for me because it made me feel like I was connected to something larger. Being in a room and in community with Black leaders who were experiencing similar successes and similar challenges just confirmed that I'm not alone in this work. It was just powerful to be in community with other Black leaders. It was powerful to be in community with like Liz and Acacia. Um, because it was such an uplifting and empowering space. Like I left that feeling like I can do anything. Anything is possible. At Beyond 12, we have big dreams. Since our founding, we've coached over 200,000 students and our model has achieved incredible results. This award puts us on track to serve 1 million students annually by 2030, catalyzing a movement for educational justice led by first-generation college students. We are so grateful to the 1954 Project for this incredible honor. Thank you. 
But as all of you know, none of this work would be possible without the incredible team behind Beyond 12. So I'd like to thank my family, our staff, our board, our community of supporters, and most importantly, the students we are so honored to serve. Thank you. Congratulations to the luminaries in the category of economic mobility and to all the luminary award winners. And special congratulations to my dear friends, Don and Liz Thompson for realizing their vision of creating the 1954 project to recognize the talent and genius of black leaders in education. As a pediatrician and public health physician, CEO and public servant for many years, I've always focused on social justice and equity, first domestically and then globally. And now as the 11th president of Spelman College, the number one ranked HBCU in our nation, I'm able to leverage the depth of our educational excellence as a huge equalizer and to prepare our young women to make a mark on society. Back in 1881, when Spelman was founded, HBCUs were the rare place where Black women could receive a higher education. And today at Spelman, 90% of our faculty have PhDs and are world-class scholars. We are proud to graduate the highest number of Black women who go on to get PhDs in STEM fields. In fact, HBCUs have educated some of our nation's brightest minds and most influential leaders, including Martin Luther King Jr., Vice President Kamala Harris, and Supreme Court Justice Thurgood Marshall who famously argued the 1954 Brown versus Board of Education case. I applaud the 1954 project for choosing luminaries each year who are also some of our brightest minds, like Ami Eubanks Davis, who you heard from earlier. Ami founded the Braven Program to prepare young people for lucrative careers that help bridge the pay equity gap. And I'm proud of Spelman's partnership with Braden because it has given our young women access to career development, mentors, and the tools needed to achieve economic mobility. And that partnership was made possible by the $1 million award Ami received as a luminary. Thank you to the 1954 Project for seeing all the luminaries on their own terms and for helping them flourish. Your work is making a world of difference. I'm delighted to turn it over to my dear friend, Don Thompson, to highlight another group of Black leaders making a positive impact on our community. To our newest cohort of luminaries, congratulations and welcome to the 1954 Network. You are now part of a powerful community that not only includes the 2021 and 2022 luminaries, but an additional group of distinguished leaders who we look forward to welcoming in person at our annual Network Summit. Today, I am extremely excited to introduce our Charles H. Houston Beacon Awardees. This dedicated group of leaders has also implemented solutions that challenge the traditional norms of education and they serve as an inspiration to others and demonstrate the impact that passionate and dedicated individuals can have on the overall education ecosystem. This award also gives us an opportunity to spotlight the legendary Charles H. Houston, the first general counsel of the NAACP whose legal brilliance helped frame the U.S. Supreme Court decision, Brown versus the Board of Education. Congratulations to the 1954 Project 
Charles H. Houston Beacon Awardees. Hi, Nicole. Hey, Sherman. How are you? I am great. Thank you and welcome today. The 1954 Project is grateful for the support of dedicated funders like the Charles and Lynn Schusterman Family Philanthropies, organizations that not only invest in Black leaders, but who are also investing and in broadening the definition of philanthropy and how it interfaces with Black leaders. As you know, the 1954 Project is also attempting to model how philanthropy should interface with Black leaders by providing its luminaries $1 million in unrestricted funding, which does not happen enough for Black leaders. Why is it important for Schusterman to support the 1954 project? Can you speak to the impact of this support beyond the financial investment? Absolutely, and again, thanks for the time. We're really grateful for the partnership uh, that we have with this organization, and it's really for three key reasons. And the first reason is that our entire mission at the Schusterman Family Philanthropies is to focus on issues of equity. So with respect to race, uh, economics and gender. And so for us finding grantees that share the background of the communities that they're serving is also really key. We know that they bring expertise, experience and proximity in some cases to the challenges that they're wrestling with. At the same time, we recognize we're only one foundation and we certainly can't do it all. That sounds really interesting. What are the other benefits of this partnership? Well, again, coming back to this idea that we can't do it all, we're looking for trusted partners. We know that there are organizations and nonprofits, and, and in this case, Black leaders that are probably not going to be on our radar screen. And so again, being able to partner with the CAFE group and tap into your expertise and your networks to ensure that we can support those leaders we may have missed is just truly a gift for us. And, and the final reason is that we are looking to think about what is our role as a foundation to support grantees and particularly leaders of color beyond money. And we know that that's our primary role because we are a foundation, but there's so many other lessons to learn and ways to support leaders of color to address some of the just inequalities inherent across philanthropy and partnering with an organization like the CAFE group gives us a chance to do that. And, and that's why honestly, we're, we're so grateful to support luminaries this year. And just like we have in the last couple of years with amazing leaders like Will Jackson at the Village of Wisdom and Ami Eubanks Davis at Raven. It's, it's really our pleasure to support you all in your amazing work. Thank you, Nicole. I cannot tell you how much we value what Schusterman and all of the funders provide and the collective impact we can have to improve access to both social and financial capital for leaders of color. We appreciate you joining us to be a part of this conversation. Hi, I'm Travian Shorters, founding CEO of BME Community. BME's mission is to build more caring and prosperous communities inspired by Black people. We do so by creating leadership communities of authentic, highly competent, build-oriented Black leaders who insist on defining people by their aspirations and contributions before noting their challenges. We call this asset framing, and it puts into practice the principle that you can't lift people up by putting them down. That's why I'm so honored to be a part of this year's Luminary Awards, amplifying the work of all these leaders who are supporting culturally affirming education. The 1954 Project and BME Community have shared and common interests. We both exist to ensure that these leaders have greater impact, engage broader audiences, are able to raise more money, and make fundamentally stronger cases for equity and systemic change. In fact, one of last year's luminaries is also a member of BME Community. Geraldine Rodriguez at the Knowledge House has a phenomenal story of growth built upon the power of combined networks. Recently, the 1954 Project traveled across the country visiting Geraldine and all of last year's luminaries, documenting the power of investment and what the gifts of time, talent, and treasure can do when put into action. Now, let's see what a difference a year can make. 
My name is Sherilyn Rodriguez and I'm the co-founder and CEO at The Knowledge House. The Knowledge House mission is to empower and sustain a pipeline of technologists who will uplift their communities out of poverty. Um, as an organization, we provide code and design job training to young people in the Bronx, New York, Newark, New Jersey, Atlanta, Georgia, and Los Angeles, California. Our goal is to make sure that young people from low-income communities can secure high-paying jobs in tech so that they can be matched to economic mobility and build generational wealth for themselves and their families. The Knowledge House uses its holistic approach to not only get students into jobs, but to get them into thriving wages to create racial equity in tech. So if I didn't have the Knowledge House, I would probably still be on a temp to temp kind of role and just hoping that something sticks without having the real fundamental skills that I need to be confident in myself that I can land the career that I want. Funders are always interested in how we work with our employer partners because we have a very high job placement rate. Our corporations connect our talent to industry professionals that volunteer their time to mentor, to tutor, to review curriculum, and that is so valuable. We also want to you know, meet the hiring needs of a lot of our corporate partners, and that of course leads to more jobs and more economic mobility. So we've been able to use the 1954 project funding to really grow the Knowledge House team. You know, before the funding, we were only a staff of 30, and now we are a staff of 50 and growing. While we currently can serve 250 students, in a few years, we would love to serve 500 students annually. Last year, we were able to participate in a dinner hosted by the Walton Family Foundation, and the luminaries were in conversation with Liz Thompson and Common about the work that we do, and it was so great to be in that room, you know, representing the work. The 1954 project has been a catalyst for us. They are still our biggest funder, and I'm just so proud that they are all Black-led, because um, it makes a difference. I'm Jamal Cannon, founder and executive director of The Block. I was a national champion boxer with a master's degree in secondary education, and I wanted to put my two loves together in order to start something to help young people who were being disregarded by our current systems. Our vision is a Chicago where every young person is a champion of their own life, and to achieve that, we cultivate the love of boxing to provide resources and opportunities to Chicago's west side youth and communities. The Luminary Award gave me the community, the social capital, and the financial support to increase the block's capacity. When it comes to expanding to schools across the west side of Chicago, when it comes to our opportunity to transform the after school landscape of Chicago's west side, it now comes within reach because of the million dollar grant that we got from the 1954 project. Our programming is exploding right now. We're training 300 young people in the sport of boxing. The first time I tried boxing, uh, it helped me with uh, self-discipline. Miss Kenna was like my first coach, and I used to have problems at school, like anger issues. And so she would help me calm down and say, it's not that, that's not a big deal. And so after that, I was like, this is a place I can be safe and feel safe with. And it's a sport I like. I mean, it was something fun to do. So I stopped basketball, football, baseball, and started boxing. As a parent, the block helped all the kids develop. Like, um, like sitting here, like watching them, like interact with them, and like you hit them with the kids that have a behavior or having a hard time with homework. Like they develop them. Like they don't. I never knock them down. Like my son, he don't. He's not in a block, but they still let him like participate in develop him to do correct. Like, okay, you can't do this, Dre, but you could do this. So they really been like a huge, big help to me as well, being a single mom. I've seen the students learn how to be responsible, hold themselves accountable. They don't quit, they, they don't stop, they fight, they give it their all in all, till they just woe out. And 
on the scene, they appreciate, they really appreciate Mr. Cannon and the block for this, for what they do. Because of our ability to hire trainers and meet that capacity, we don't end our impact in the ring. We are providing enrichment services so young people are learning things like screen printing, money management, computer science right here at the block. So we get the Luminary Award and I meet Liz and Don Thompson. I get connected with a network of black leaders from across the country who are doing amazing things. The power of this network has been its ability to help us approach our multi-year growth plan. We've received strategic fundraising advice and we've gotten support on our board development. So it's more than just the money, it's holistic support. I was invited to participate in the Grant Makers for Education Conference to share a stage with Liz and Sharif and share our thoughts on the importance of investing in black leaders directly to philanthropists that put me in a position of influence that I'd never been in before, and it was outstanding. Becoming a 1954 Project Luminary made me feel affirmed in terms of my voice and my vision. BNOVA's mission is to provide professional development and capacity building support to black educators and black led schools in New Orleans so that they can ensure a quality education for New Orleans students. Our Black is Brilliant program represents the set of work that we do to support black educators citywide. There are two components, our annual Black is Brilliant Summit, which happens every summer, as well as our just launched Black is Brilliant Institute. Both of these programs were created and founded by my co-leader and partner in purpose, uh, Stevana Elam Rogers. We want to ensure that our teachers feel hopeful about the possibilities that they are creating for their students but not just in their classroom, beyond the classroom. What I'm most excited about with our institute um, is the seed that it's going to plant um, to build more innovative spaces for black educators. Being a black educator is more than just being a teacher. It's being the mentor, it's being the person, the liaison, Sometimes it's being the classroom friend and it's just being everything that you can for students. We've had some setbacks in New Orleans. Of course, the global pandemic uh, that everybody has experienced, but also the sea change of Hurricane Katrina and what that has meant in terms of uh, access to resources for schools that have been chronically underfunded. Two years ago, when the pandemic hit, Binola decided to partner with Algiers Charter to say, how can the voices still be heard? How can we express what's going on in a black community that is not being expressed by the larger community, given the opportunity for parents to talk, for social workers to talk, for community engagement to happen? Binola has uh, bought been the vehicle to build these relationships and have entree into these networks that we didn't have before. And Adrenda is the primary reason for that because she has the ability and skills to get to those tables and talk to folk. When I reflect on our development for the past three years, I, I'm excited. We've been able to partner with over 10 schools in our city. We've been able to come alongside 25 black school leaders, and we've been able to serve over a thousand black educators in our city through our various programs. One of the things that I'm most excited about uh, as a small and mighty team is that the support of the 1954 project is helping us to build our internal capacity to do, to do the work. Um, we are going to be able to add additional headcount to our team uh, that will free me up to do more fundraising, to do more external engagements, to continue to share the story of Binola and the story of the work that we are doing at Binola in a way that 
uh, attracts and draws you know more partners and more resources to the work. I'm really excited about it and I'm really grateful uh, that the 1954 project is, is helping us to do that. Village of Wisdom is a community of black parents seeking to protect black genius. We bring this community together to create culturally affirming learning environments for our children to learn, grow, and thrive. At Village of Wisdom, it's my job to ensure that parents are supported and that they're connected to the resources that they need and also exposed to great opportunities in and out of the village. More than 17,000 people downloaded our last toolkit. A toolkit that provides strategies and examples to black parents and educators to use in their classrooms. We have parents on more than five advisory committees, not only just here in Durham, but some of them sitting on national committees that are making decisions about parent engagement and what culturally affirming education looks like, um, or even contributing to how people are thinking about measures and criteria for what high-level learning looks like. And so uh, that's just what we've done since 1954 Project has invested in us. And I would say the goal through all of that is for us to really learn when we're looking at things that promote the positive development of black youth, that ultimately that's also going to support those other outcomes that school leaders and educators care about. So that's the gift that 1954 Project gave us, is the gift of time, the gift of resources, the gift of giving black parents the opportunity to tap into their genius to create a more loving and affirming world for their children. The gift of the investment from the 1954 Project, that million dollar investment in us, is that we get to take that investment and go back to our uh, current funders and say, Look at this level of investment that 1954 Project has made in us. Schusterman Foundation, uh, after this investment, is going to make a larger investment into Village of Wisdom. And so those types of things mean a lot. Um, this, this initial investment from 1954 Project has a multiplying effect, if you will. We're thinking holistically about our staff, how we support them with strong compensation and benefits, but also how we develop them as leaders and make space for everyone to show up with their full selves and their full wisdom and brilliance in the work that they do. In my household, my self-care benefit goes for the support of my daughter who has lots of medical needs and it has been a tremendous relief to my family, to my other daughter, who also is responsible for a lot of her love and care. And um, I cannot leave Val because of that benefit <laughs> alone. We talk about investing in black parents to be the ones who are creating the ideas that would create more culturally affirming learning environments for their children. Then you have to think about the fact that we need to give them the time, space, and opportunity uh, to be able to do that. And so when we think about that goal of 100 black parents in five years and how many advisory councils could this army sit on? How could they change the world in those rooms where people make the decisions? And that's what gets us excited about this work is that it could be a small but a mighty army. Nicole Collins-Pori. 
Um, at TechBridge Girls, we believe that STEM education is just not working for black and brown girls across this country. And we want to see it changed and transformed so that our girls can better engage, thrive, and bring their brilliance to STEM and the revolution that is to come. TechBridge Girls started over 20 years ago in a science center in Oakland, California because we believe that black and brown girls in elementary and middle school deserve a quality STEM education program in their communities. By building new partnerships, we were able to touch over 100 program sites across 25 states. That enables us to provide over 300 hours of training to make sure our educators understand what it means to be an equitable advocate for black and brown girls in their programs. Our strategic plan has a really bold goal to reach a million girls by 2030. And with all the excitement that brings, that also creates a big lift for us. And with the 1954 project, we were able to translate the words that we put on a piece of paper into action. We were able to build strong relationships with organizations like the Fort Worth Museum of Science and History. We are able to deepen our training for our out of school time educators so they are getting the tools they need to deliver equitable STEM education. So the Fort Worth Museum of Science and History and TechBridge Girls have partnered to bring STEM education to girls in our local community. So one of the things you'll see us do is create a light up mirror in that the STEM component is the girls learning a little bit about electrical circuits and they'll have some sticker LED lights that they'll add to their, their circuit and then they'll also be able to personalize that and add words of affirmation to themselves so when they look in that mirror they can see a strong reflection of who they are. What is so amazing about this journey, not only with the 1954 project, but TechBridge Girls in general, is the partnership that we have with our board. Our board is growing and it becomes reflective of the girls that we're serving, but more importantly, what we want our girls to achieve. So as we continue to grow as an organization, our board continues to grow and our board continues to reflect the outcomes and the results that we want and hope for our girls. As a board member, supporting this audacious goal of one million girls by 2030 is foremost in our mind. Our partners provide experiences as well as role models. It's really important for the girls to see someone that looks like them interacting in the STEM field. We want to ensure no girls are left behind and in order for us to do that we go and engage our educators because we understand that they have the power and the influence to impact our girls persistence. So what I look forward to the future is individuals like Didi who's going to create spaces for our girls to thrive, for them to laugh, for them to learn, to have the rigor in STEM education that will allow them to achieve their STEM aspirations. DD and all of the educators across this country that TechBridge has the ability to touch is transforming the environments for our girls to thrive. And every girl that thrives in STEM education means that they will thrive in their future and that our country is better for it. Peace, everyone, and congratulations to the 2023 cohort of luminaries. Your leadership, your compassion, and dedication are why I've been a supporter of the 1954 project since the beginning. Y'all know the love of education runs through my veins. Last year, I had a chance to meet three of the 2022 luminaries, and Liz and I had a fireside chat in New York. Shout out to the Walton Family Foundation for hosting a great Juneteenth event. It was so inspiring to hear directly from the luminaries on how being selected to receive $1 million helped to move their vision and work forward and how much they appreciated the 1954 project. Liz's vision 
three years strong now, is transforming education philanthropy and fueling Black-led solutions for change. And it's just getting started. Congratulations again on breaking records this year. And I'm honored to be a part of the celebration. Peace, y'all. Man, those are some powerful stories. Nothing makes the power of investment so clear as to when we hear the testimonies of our luminaries and those we hope to support in the future. Because at the 1954 Project, we don't say no. We look for ways to be able to say yes. We've raised $35 million to fund the program over the next several years to continue to build out the power of investment in these organizations that have stepped up to meet the needs of our communities. The power of investment is a we thing. People tend to think it takes a huge financial commitment to be a philanthropist, but that's just not true. We can all give at the level that feels right to us and be a part of the solution. Seeing black philanthropy in action is awe-inspiring, especially as we celebrate our own. We have a lot of narratives in our community that need to be rewritten. We don't hear as much about the significant contributions of black philanthropists, but we're out here. We've always been out here. Giving back is a huge part of our story and goes way back in our community. We've always given of our time, our talent, and our treasure to our churches, our schools, and our neighbors in need. The power of investment can take many forms. Yes, it's definitely money, but it can also be through your time of coaching and mentoring or even offering your testimony as an inspirational story of what can be achieved. You know, sharing your own story about your journey of perseverance or resilience in the face of adversity can make the difference for someone in the midst of difficult times. And many times, the power of investment is leveraged to produce even greater returns within our 1954 network. For example, after our $1 million investment in Huet Senghor of the Black Teacher Collaborative, she went on to receive another million dollars from New Profit and $3 million from McKinsey Scott. And then there's luminary Geraldine Rodriguez of the Knowledge House, who was able to raise $5 million during her first year of being a luminary, the most her organization has ever received in a single year. And finally, Ami Eubanks Davis of Braven received $11 million from McKinsey Scott after being named the 1954 Project Luminary. These are just a few samples of what happens when we shine a light on the amazing accomplishments of black leaders in education. Won't you join us and allow us to recognize even more of the genius across the education landscape? When you invest in a 1954 project, you're helping these brilliant leaders scale and grow their work. When you invest in a 1954 project, you provide these change makers with resources to build their capacity, develop their teams, and make their thought leadership available for all to learn from. Now that you've heard the stories, please join our 1954 Project Network because education continues to be one of our most critical levers to achieving equity. Thank you. And of course, there's no way we could have done any of this without our incredible team at the CAFE Group and the 1954 Project. Now this year is bittersweet because we are saying farewell to our founding director, Acacia Wilson-Feinberg, the very first member of the 1954 Project team. We wish Acacia the best, where she will continue to focus on creating educational equity, opportunity, and access for black leaders. Go do it, Acacia, we are proud of you. And we would also like to thank Nicole Baker Fulgham from Charles and Lynn Schusterman Family Philanthropies for being a part of today's program and their generous contribution. And more special thank yous to all of our new and existing funders, like the Chan Zuckerberg Initiative, the Michael and Susan Dell Foundation, and as always, our friends at the Walton Family Foundation. Thank you for your continued support. And now we'd like for you to become part of our circle of support. Please follow the instructions on the screen and join us in the 1954 Project movement. 
you'll be the first to receive an invitation to our special recognition next year of the 70th anniversary of the Brown versus Board decision and the 10th anniversary celebration of our very own cafe. Trust us, you won't want to miss this. Don, Liz, this has been a fantastic program. I'm so excited about the work happening across the nation to uplift our students, affirm their potential, and support our educators at all levels. I've loved meeting a few of your inaugural luminaries and watching them introduce this year's class of leaders. And I've especially loved seeing your passion in action and your drive to inspire more people to join you in this work. Thank you all for watching, engaging in the chat, and sharing these stories with your network. Together, we can help all these luminaries and beacons shine even brighter with our time, talent, treasure, and testimony. Will you join us in demonstrating the power of investment? Thanks again, stay safe, and we'll see you next year. And thanks to all of the people working behind the scenes to make the 1954 project a reality. From our leadership council to our application review committee to the production crew that works with all of our luminaries and beacons to tell their stories, we're so grateful to each and every one of you. Um, and I just love, love like how transparent she was and, and the push and the challenges she gave like about building networks, not looking at each other as competitors, but also being in community with each other as we grew, as we grow, as we build our own individual, but we're actually building something as a collective. It's different after today. It really is. It's different after this experience because you think of an award as a one-time thing and you think of a network as, as a lifetime family. Let me know when you're ready. Oh, it's okay. 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 That makes me feel a little bit more better. The at night curriculum. And I don't know what else I wrote down. <laughs> Mostly keeping my grade up and my GPA at a high number. Uh, 3.37, I think. Something around there. I'm not sure. I haven't looked at it in a while. Verses just to heal through generations of hurt. I'm always focused on the words like a book from the church. You can't take my ethic, you just gotta respect it. A lot of brothers see their talent and they force them to go.